Kurunichiwa. Hello, and welcome back to another class session with Oro Crony. Not back here again. Yes, we're back here. <laughs> no, this is this is the wrong class. This is the wrong class. Uh, if you're... If you went to the wrong room, you should head on out. This is the... The audio tech setup class. Yes. No, this is not the Riz class. So, today... I will be going over some stuff. And, well... We are first gonna be taking a look at microphones, which is, of course, the main priority here. And then we're gonna look at audio interface. Face. There we go. And then three uh, miscellaneous stuff. And then four headphones. <laughs> Why is the C so far? You know, that's not on me. That's the font's problem. I... Actually, that is not the font's problem. There we go. <sighs> Alright! So... Any of you uh, ever considered on getting an upgrade from your desktop or earphone microphones? Anyone? Why is the teacher so tired? Well, the teacher has been out touching grass all day. Very important things. Mayhaps, I see. Mm-hmm. I see. Uh, cell phone mic. Well, phone mics. Phone mics are fine, too, like, I suppose. Because, see, uh, mm, when I first started out, I was using phone microphones. Just as a hobby kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And, well... With that being said, let's go over some stuff now. So to start us off, we're going to be taking a look at USB microphones because that's usually um, the first thing that people decide to get into when they decide that they want to upgrade their audio interface a lot of the times. So, let's take a look at USB microphones. Now... Why? Why? Why would we go for USB microphones? First of all, we do this because it's inexpensive in comparison. And... Uh, just, uh, straightforward. Straightforward setup. Yes. That's... Yeah, it's, it's mostly just plug and play. And done. It's quick and easy, that's why people use them. I also have it, uh, when they need it for travel setups. So... Here are some of the recommendations that I have in mind, which is, as long as uh, hope I have it on the first page, the second, do, 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 do. okay, yeah, I'm on the first one. All right. <laughs> okay. 
to uh, load it up the image. Here it is. This is an AT2020 USB microphone. Now, this is also a pretty solid choice because it comes with a stand. Now, the stand is a little flimsy, uh, so you might have to find another stand. However, mm, I'm going to be using the term bright and dark. But now for uh, brighter microphones like the AT2020, it's going to be a clear giveaway that you've upgraded from a computer microphone to a USB. This one has a little bit more of a higher frequency, so it's going to uh, complement your voice more. Ah. Bright and dark, what, what do you mean by that? So, brighter... Brighter microphones mean that it's going to be emphasizing on the higher frequencies of your voice. So... Uh... It's going to make it sound like... How should I say? It's a little more... I really don't know how else to explain it other than it being more bright, but... Uh, how should I explain this? So, dark, for example, is what I would consider it to be my voice, because uh, it's a voice that would complement the lower frequencies, and now brighter microphones uh, would complement higher frequencies. Hmm. And, uh, anyway, I'm just going to make them more easily digestible for you guys. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, this is from my personal experience. AT2020, uh, I think is pretty good without any editing involved. It sounds pretty crisp. I think it's pretty good, although one thing that you would have to keep in mind is that obviously you would need a pop filter for any of your microphones. Uh, and also, the stand is a little flimsy, so if you can change it up, that would be good. The only downside of this microphone would be the stand, and that would be it. The price point, all of these USB microphones are within a $100 range. So it's gonna be a lot better than some of the XLR microphones, which, including the audio interface, it's gonna be around uh, ranging from two mid two hundred to uh, a you name it really. <laughs> okay, and now moving on. This is the Rode NT USB. I think this would be a good for people with lower voices, though it does sound a little more muffled. That's what I got from my personal experience. It sounds a little muffled, just, just slightly. But I'm pretty sure it's not going to be so bad uh, for people who have lower voices. And... Yeah, I think I think it's a pretty decent microphone. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Not not really much to uh, go over. Yeah, but I do recommend this microphone to uh, also within a hundred dollar range. Now, most USB microphones they're all similar. They all do a similar job, is what I can say, because. Uh, in exchange for convenience, you can't really get an amazing quality out of USB microphones. They're all very standard. Mm -hmm. And now, something that I have used in the past and have a soft spot for, you're gonna you're gonna not like it is the Blue Yeti. 
Now, the reason why a lot of people recommend the Blue Yeti、uh, is because it has a lot of polar patterns, which I'm going to be going over it.、Uh, though I have used this microphone for a pretty long time, maybe about three years, two to three years, I think. And it, it's, pretty, it's pretty solid. I like it. Uh, you can do mic monitoring, though I really haven't seen much use out of it.、Um, and it, it has a warm quality to it. And now, what I mean by warm is that、mm, your audio sounds like,、uh, I guess, your voice sounds more closer when your voice is. Oh, what am I saying?、Uh, when you're closer to the microphone, it sounds, how should I say, more prominent. And this is what that mic would do.、Mm. More saturated would be, in a way, correct. But to be more precise, it has more presence. I think it gives more presence to your voice. Now, what stands out with this microphone? Which is what I'm gonna go over right now. Like I said, I briefly、uh, went over it, but the polar patterns, there are different polar patterns to this, which is why you might see this microphone being used for. ASMR or other things. So now, when you're doing ASMR, you can do omnidirectional mode, which is what you can hear from all angles. So that's probably why a lot of people use it for ASMR.、Um, but if you want to use it as a, you know, as a recording purpose, then you would be using cardioid mode, which is what. Most people use. Mm -mm -mm. Most people. That's usually the standard、uh, polar pattern that you go for. And stere stereo mode, bi directional. Don't really use it for streaming or other purposes like that. The most common uses that you would find would be、uh, the cardioid and omnidirectional mode, which obviously cardioid for、uh, general talking purposes, streaming, recording, you name it, omnidirectional ASMR. That's it. <laughs> Is bidirectional mode for off collabs? Uh, I would recommend using the cardioid mode for that one. Because、mm, when you're streaming, it's just gonna sound a little wonky hearing、uh, the voices left and right.、Mm -mm. So it's best to have it in mono instead of it being、uh, stereo. And with that aside, now that we understand what USB microphones are for, we can now jump over to XLR microphones. That was pretty quick, ain't it? Now we move it on to XLR microphones. You've decided to invest in an XLR microphone because you, you think it's time for an upgrade. You think you can afford it. Sure. Let's go. And now, the good thing for this one is、mm, better quality, obviously.、Mm, more control. And kind of. In a way, customizable.
Oh, but going back though, uh, if you can't afford uh, the Yeti, which is in the $100 range, you can try going for the, the Snowball, the Blue Snowball. It's gonna be a lot lower in volume. However, it's about... It's, it's a little bit of a similar quality, but you're just gonna have to use it in cardioid mode only. Mm-hmm. Also portable, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But if you want a little more versatility... Wait, give me a second. I gotta be right back. <laughs> I've been muted. Okay. So what was I saying? Uh, yes. So if you're able to uh, do some post-processing, I do recommend the Snowball, though the volume is going to be lesser in comparison to the Yeti. I still recommend it if you don't have the money. Mm -hmm. And okay. Uh, that's Put aside, uh, XLR microphone, better quality, more control, customizable. Now, we will be taking a look at two microphones. Two types of microphones. <laughs> now we'll be looking at, uh, we'll be taking a look at the condenser microphone. And dynamic microphone. So these are the two prominent types. Yes, this is still on the topic of XLR. Mm -hmm. Now, condenser microphones are... Um, how should I say this? It's more commonly used. Now, dynamic microphones are still pro like pretty popular, but condenser microphones are used uh, in a in a recording environment, I should say. And dynamic microphones are used for, uh, let's say, concerts or uh, podcasts and whatnot. Now, the reason why. Now, the reason why some people might prefer the condenser microphone or the dynamic microphone is because condenser microphones, they are, um, how should I mark this? Remove this. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> they're more sensitive, more sensitive, uh, to, uh, the recording environment. So, this can either be a good or a bad thing. It's, uh, it's because, what was I gonna say? Yeah, it's going to be able to capture your voice a lot more crisp and clear, but because of that, if you don't treat uh, your recording space, it's going to be more noticeable. If there's a dog barking in the background, it is very likely that it'll come through clear, too clear, to even remove it from post-processing. Mm-hmm. 
And now in comparison, dynamic microphones, they usually focus uh, on your voice only. It's uh, the, how should I say? The, the audio stuff, let's just say, let's just put it as audio stuff. The audio stuff where it captures your voice is centered uh, more towards where your voice is. So it's going to focus on, uh, most of the time, your voice and nothing else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> audio stuff is the scientific term, yes, of course. So, this is going to be, um, better centered, uh, towards your voice. And it, thanks to this, if you have a loud, louder environment, I would recommend a dynamic microphone. Mm-hmm. Alright, let's see. So, let us check out the specific microphone. <laughs> so, a very good example for a beginner condenser microphone is the Rode NT1A. Now, this is something that a lot of people use because they often give this out as a package. They have uh, the I think they give you uh, the pop filter and the shock mount and the microphone mm, all in a set. And it's gonna be uh, affordable in comparison to uh, other microphones. Mm -hmm. And this, like I said, condenser microphones, people would use this if they have their environment treated properly. Otherwise, it's going to be a lot more clear uh, when your space is, let's say, empty. So your voice is going to echo a lot more. There's that. However, if you do treat it, then it's going to come through crisp and clear. So that's going to be good. And let's see. Mm -hmm. Then another popular dynamic microphone is the the Shure SM7B. This is more pricey. Mm -hmm. And if you look at, can't even circle it. But if you look at the the end there. Okay, how should I how should I put this? So, sometimes people don't use this microphone properly. They record it like this. You're not supposed to record it like that. <laughs> Cuz the the audio is centered through here. So, you're supposed to uh, record it like that. Otherwise, it's just going to sound muffled and if you complain, like, oh, the audio doesn't sound that clear. Why is that? Maybe it's because you're recording it like this. So, yeah. But it's understandable as to why you would be confused because condenser microphones are recorded in this way. And dynamic microphones are recorded this way. And... Maybe you'd be under like you'd be able to understand as to why uh, the dynamic microphone is going to focus on your voice more because it's like I said the audio stuff is only placed at the tip of the microphone or well near the tip of the microphone. Meanwhile, the condenser microphone is like this, uh, more surface area to cover. So anyway, pretty easy, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. So uh, 
good way to remember this is if you have a loud environment, get a dynamic microphone. If you want, how should I say? If you want to have the Not the entire frequency, but if you want to cover more frequencies than a dynamic microphone, then you get a condenser microphone. And let's see. Right, with that done, I'm gonna show you an audio interface that a lot of people use too. Oh, wait, before that, uh, one downside about the dynamic microphone is that if you're VTubing, for example, I kind of don't think it's a good idea because in order for this to sound good, you have to be real close to the microphone, like, like as if you're about to eat it. <laughs> has to be in front of you like this. So if you look at podcast interviews, uh, they often use this microphone, but you'll see that a lot of them have the microphone right up to the face. That's because the quality is going to sound better that way. Mm. And because of that, if you're VTubing, uh, it's going to, I guess, not track. <laughs> and uh, condenser microphones, you can put it at a distance. But dynamic microphones, you're gonna have to put it right in front of your face. And that's, <laughs> that's not really gonna work out. So, yeah. And now you can see why. It would focus on your voice more obviously, because you're right in front of the mic like that. <laughs> yeah, and meanwhile you can put the condenser microphone at a distance because it's just that sensitive and it's still going to capture your voice pretty crisp and clear. Okay. Now that that's done. <laughs> Did I cover? Did I cover everything? Oh yeah! And I just want to say that... Just because a microphone works well for one person, it doesn't mean that that microphone is gonna be good on you. Mm, just have to get that out of the way. So, people say that Shure SM7B is awesome and that people should use it. It might not work on your voice. Now, if you have a real deep voice, this is gonna sound pretty good. However, if you have a high-pitched voice and you decide to use the Shure, it's not gonna be as good. It's a pretty uh, dark microphone. Now, meanwhile, condenser microphones, uh, they still have brighter microphones that complement people with higher voices or people with lower voices. And you just gotta have to look around. And the more expensive microphones, uh, they're able to complement all sorts of voices. So it has a neutral frequency in the microphone. And those are often pretty expensive. Ah, the most expensive one being the... Well, not the most expensive one, but the one that I want, personally, would be... The, the Neumann U87. I really want that one. <laughs> but if you want to see what that is... Let me show you. Mm-hmm. 
Is that... Okay, that should be good. Oh god, the image is too small. Mm. Ah. Ah. You know what? Oh, I want to get like a square image, but this is fine. Alright. Let me uh, put that in here. Um, why is it not showing up? God. It's so difficult. It's so difficult. Life, man. Wait, it should be there. What the heck? Oh, I didn't... <laughs> ah, don't worry about it. Okay. Mm -hmm. There. Alright. Awesome. This one. This is the Norman U87. This is good. Because, uh... This complements all sorts of voices. However, this is pretty expensive! It's about, um... Mid-4,000s? <laughs> pretty expensive. However... Uh... It provides neutral frequencies it doesn't focus on so like a lot of microphones uh they go for oh hey this one's a brighter microphone this one's a darker microphone this one is a little more flexible than that so yeah yeah i'd like that one day but anyway yeah with that aside just remember, mics with neutral frequencies, they are a lot more expensive. And now let's see. Uh, audio interface. Audio interface. Let's type that. Why did it skip to that? Whatever. So audio, audio interface. Now, this is also pretty, pretty important because sometimes it is also surprising when I found out, but these ones also have um, their own differences, and because of that, it gets pretty, pretty expensive. Audio interface, what is it? It is only for XLR microphones. USB, USB microphones, they don't need that. But when it comes to XLR microphones, you need it because this is how you power your microphone. And if you're using a condenser microphone, you need a thing called phantom power, which is uh, giving extra extra power, extra juice to your mic in order for it to sound crisp and clear. Why the Chuny name? I don't know, man. But with this power, you can power your condenser microphone and it's gonna be awesome, baby! Mm-hmm. But these ones also have... Uh like brighter microphones or, or well like it gives the quality uh, a little more bright a little more darker there's there are things like that but also uh, your audio interface well it, it depends on which one I suppose but it can also make it a lot more quiet in comparison to other interfaces. Mm -hmm. uh. And uh, let's see. Yeah, uh, with the audio interface, you can adjust the volume and 
Uh, depending on which audio interface you use, you can adjust the volume so that you can hear the mic volume while also listening to uh, your your desktop audio. So it's going to be a lot more easy to monitor your voice uh, while you're recording or singing or something like that. Yeah. So you can hear yourself. Yes, yes. And... Yeah, what else? But not all of them provide uh, mic monitoring. Mm, sometimes. Depending on the interface. I would hate to hear myself. Well... See, that's the thing. If you're gonna do voice acting, you kind of have to get used to the sound of your voice. Oh wait, I should, I should probably like remove that since we're talking about whatever. Anyway, and then what else? Audio interface, phantom power, yep. And then... Uh, yeah, XLR microphones in general, they need it. Even dynamic microphones, they need it because obviously they gotta power the, the microphone somehow, right? But if the audio interface isn't giving enough power, then you can use a cloud lifter or an amplifier for your dynamic microphone, which is gonna be good because... Uh, dynamic microphones, they require, I think, a bit more power, if I recall correctly. Mm-hmm. And cloud lifters are something that a lot of people use for their dynamic microphone, especially the Shure SM7B. And, yeah, okay. And now with that, let's take a look at the audio interface. Uh, this is the Scarlet. And it's a pretty stable audio interface. And something that a lot of people use. Yes, yes. Ah, my first one, yes. I think it's a pretty good investment since uh Yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty stable. I don't think it would let anyone down. Great entry level. Mm-hmm. And if you have trouble with your mic sounding too quiet, you can always increase it by uh, increasing the volume, aka the gain. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that's pretty, pretty important. But also you need to find the right audio interface for you. Uh, there are some more expensive interfaces out there that are uh, implementing more features. Yep. Yeah, but those are pretty expensive too. Uh, I think I think they're also around um, a thousand something. How much space do you need for all this? Uh, well, not too much. Not too much. I'm sure you can fit it in somehow. For an XLR microphone, you just need an audio interface and a microphone. Uh, maybe a mic stand, more preferably uh, a boom arm or a mic stand, depending on what you want. If you just want a better quality uh, while you're playing games, then I guess boom arm. But if you want to record, then a mic stand. Mm. Yeah. And now a shock mount. Oh, let me show you what a shock mount is. So see that, uh, the little spiky thing? That is something, 
that is recommended for your mic. It's a way to hold your mic together, but also it helps reduce the amount of vibrations go into your microphone, so it'll prevent or, well, reduce the vibrations going through your microphone and causing um, unwanted noise. Mm -mm. So that's what it's for. And pop filters, they also have a single mesh and a double mesh. Mm. If you have a lot of siblings or uh, popping sounds... Uh, right now, I can't really remember what the... Oh yeah, the, the clicking noise. The clicking noise, the plosives, and the siblings. If you want to reduce that, then I recommend getting a a double mesh filter for these types. Mm -hmm. So the reason why you would want a double mesh is because it's going to filter unwanted sound coming from your voice a little more than what a single mesh would do. Oh, what do those words mean? Sorry. So, sibilance. <laughs> sibilance is like those hissing sounds, like s snakes. Hissing snakes. And popping sounds are just popcorn. <laughs> so, that's what a plosive is. And then clicking is uh, mouth sounds. And I think I saw someone asking, oh, how do you remove those clicking sounds? Well, the thing is, that means you're dehydrated or you don't have enough water. So you just got to be drinking water constantly and keep talking until that clicking sound goes away. That's why a lot of voice actors, uh, they drink a lot of water Mm, not only because their voice is, you know, overused and getting tired, but it's also so that their mouth sounds aren't getting in the way for recording. <sighs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And anyway, what else? What else? What else can I say? Ooh! Well, cables... So, XLR cables. There are also XLR cables. I guess I can show this one. Um, XLR cables, they're not really as important, though if you really want to be an audiophile, yes, it does somewhat matter because uh, if there's proper insulation around the cable, then it might be able to block out any uh, interference. And that might also help lessen unwanted noise uh, going into your microphone. Mm hmm. Yes, yes, the cable shielding. So, you need to have uh, a cable that can do its job properly. However, if you just get a cheap one, they're usually around like $20 or something. You can just get that. You won't really be able to tell much of a difference because a cheap one can also basically do its job. So, I don't know. But if you really want to be an audiophile, which I decided to <laughs> get a more expensive one, and yeah, those are a little more pricey. Yeah. Yes, I see one person, Mogami cables, that's right. Those are pretty, uh, pretty good quality. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm.
so yeah if you want if you think there are a lot of uh background noise like a lot of hissing sounds or some sort of electrical interference uh then maybe you should see if your cable needs some upgrade or something yeah um sometimes you can tell that your cable needs a new one i guess you need to exchange it for a new one when it starts popping a little too much or something's going on it's either that the microphone is having a problem or that the cable is having a problem but obviously the cheaper method the cheaper i guess how should i say the cheaper option is to uh, go for the cable which is a lot more easier to switch so just try that Best pray it's never the mic. Mm -hmm. But oftentimes, uh, mics have a year or two year warranty, so you can just send it off. I broke my microphone one time, but they were pretty uh, receptive and understanding about it, so I just sent it, and then within three weeks, I got it. I got it fixed and sent back. It was good. How did I break it? I broke the the dial on the the mic yeah it was the mic's fault actually kind of they, they were still pretty understanding about it but anyway let's see now that that's done we're gonna go focus on headphones yes i don't have any images for headphones but it's pretty straightforward, so I'm gonna tell you. Now, headphones. We're not gonna be focusing on gaming headphones. It's not about that. We're going to uh, we're gonna be focusing on recording headphones, monitoring headphones. All right. So uh, there are. Oh, well, there's also like semi-open, semi-closed. What? Oh, whatever. But anyway. There's open back and close back headphones. And now what do those things mean? What the heck do they mean? So uh, open back means you're able to monitor it in your own uh, environment. You can hear whatever's going on in your room. However, um, because you can monitor it in a more free space, your basically your headphones, whatever you hear through your headphones, everyone else will be able to hear it. So uh, that's pretty much really used for mixing open backs. Hmm. Like, the good thing about open backs is that it's not going to be muffled in comparison to closed back. So you'll be able to uh, uh, hear the audio better. Yeah. But the con to this is... Everyone else is gonna hear it. Yeah. And uh, let's see, uh, close back. That one is good for monitoring your voice as you're recording it. And then, like I said, you can monitor your mic while also listening to audio. And that's going to be good when you're recording for songs or just recording in general. Because you can hear your voice. And also, um, it's sealed so that there's going to be no sound leaking. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be more muffled, is what I'm going to say. Oh, clothes bags get hotter too. Yeah, that's true. 
because it's sealed <laughs> like a lot more than open bags. Open bags are more comfortable. Yeah, but close. I I like closed bag. It's it's pretty reliable. <laughs> I get kind of lazy, so I use uh like a pair of closed bag headphones. And if I really want to try hard, then I use an open bag. Yeah. And now, the reason why people use open bag. It's, it's because uh, you get to hear better, I guess. Yeah, you get to hear better. You're in your... Yeah, you, you get to hear more, I think. Yeah, I think that's the better way to put it. And that's why it's better for mixing. And what else? Ooh. And... It's best to monitor with different types of headphones and earphones and whatnot because the frequencies are always going to sound different. For example, like earphones, the frequencies that you can hear are going to be much more limited in comparison to headphones. Now this is something that uh, audio files can relate to probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you switch them when you do mixing? Yeah, I listen to them uh, on my earphones, on my phone, and then I use different, uh, different pair of headphones and whatnot. And because of that, I mix a lot. Yeah. Okay. And that about covers it i think pretty uh, pretty informative i think almost an hour which is pretty good now i will be taking them q a's all right q and a Oh, it's hidden. Whoops. Q&A. There we go. Increase that. Yeah, but most of all, you gotta find a microphone that suits you the best. And you gotta do your research, too, to see which microphone is gonna be best for ya. Let me switch this to Q&A so that I can see better. Start a Q&A! Uh... Q... and A. Alright, let's see. Between condenser and dynamic, would you recommend if you- Oh god. Wait, what'd you say? <laughs> you got buried! Where- where'd you go? Uh, does each mic need its own setup? Or can I share them between mics? Well, you can switch out your... Your mic. And use the same audio interface. It's- it's fine. Mm, for me, I switch between audio interfaces because GoXLR, while it provides, uh, I guess, I, I guess not zero latency, but it has lower latency in comparison to the, the audio interface that I use, it has a lot more noise in comparison, which is why I prefer using my usual. Um, let's see. Do you do any post-processing for your recordings? So see, that's the thing. Uh, if they have an audio engineer, you would just be able to hand it over with raw files. No post-processing, no noise reduction needed, nothing whatsoever. However, um, 
if the project is slightly uh, under more budget, let's say indie projects, then you might have to provide them with options where you uh, do some post-processing on your files. Uh, let's see. Is there an easy way to save your audio settings for streaming versus recording without relying on GoXLR profiles? Uh, I noticed you. I noticed you sometimes have new settings because you had to record before you stream. Uh, that's because I turn up gain or lower the gain, and. Uh, yeah, because of that, I kind of have to readjust the gain. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's probably why it sounds like I might have readjusted the filters or whatnot, but I haven't done that at all. It's just the gain. Mm. And how many mics do I have? Uh, uh, I have two USB microphones, and I have... Two, two XLR microphones. Gotta think about that. Yeah, uh, yeah, two, two. I do my research, I look at reviews, I look at demos before I decide that yes, I'm gonna buy this. Oh yeah, one ASMR microphone too, yeah. Just including that, it would be about five. Let's see here. Okay. Uh, how do you set your gain when recording? Do you usually make it safe and make it never peak or try to be on the edge of peaking? So, uh, most important part when you're recording, never let it peak. Never. But that doesn't mean that you have to record it so quiet because when you decide to increase it while your voice is still quiet, it's going to have a lot of noise in the background. So it's best to have it at an audio level where you can still hear it and not peak. Don't record it loud. I'd say... Okay, I gotta, I gotta record. Uh, my audio first. Okay, let's see. How do I... There's a there's a certain balance. You gotta record it. Uh-uh. Hello, hello, hello. I am doing stuff. Ah uh, ha 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 ha. Alright, okay, now I remember. You have to record it between... Uh, around negative 15 to negative 10 decibels. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. <laughs> what should I use for adjusting my microphone? Audio interface. Audio interface is used for giving power to your microphone and uh you can do that by adjusting the gain. Mm-hmm. Any thoughts on compressors? Compressors are good. Uh, though, I think... Well, that's pretty much used for post-processing, so I don't really have much to say about that. And let's see. Good position for microphones, for ceiling stand, or desk stand. That's kind of up to you, honestly. As long as you have a boom arm, it's not gonna be so bad. Though if you use a mic stand, uh, like a desktop stand, where you can just like put it there, I don't recommend it because the vibrations that are going to be, uh, I guess, it's, it's going to vibrate throughout your desk. Even if you think it's quiet and whatever, um, those frequencies are most likely going to travel up to your microphone. And it might cause some unwanted 
background noise. Mm, let's see. Doo -doo 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 -doo. How do I find uh, the correct volume range? I answer that one, which mic is best for loud environments and which for quieter voices. That one, quieter voices, it's easy. Just increase your gain. So there's no such thing as, oh, which microphone is gonna be good for quieter voices? Just increase the gain, increase the volume, and that's going to be fixed. And as for loud environments, I would recommend using a dynamic microphone because that way uh, it's just going to focus uh, in the direction that your voice is coming through and n not in not in other directions. Mm -hmm. And is it necessary to cover the mic when not using it? I kind of do that. I put a plastic bag over mine as a cheaper alternative. I know some people put a sock over it. Uh, which is fine. I just use a plastic bag, a Ziploc bag to be exact, because it's just easy. I don't unplug it, no. It's just better for the longevity of your microphone, because if dust gets into your mic, it's not gonna be good. It might even not work in the future. Uh, let's see here. Mm -hmm -hmm. Is there ever a situation where USB microphones produce better quality sound than XLR? Not really. Because USB microphones, in order to compensate for the lack of an audio interface, they try to power everything within that one microphone. And because there's a limitation to how much power uh, it can give to your microphone, you can hear a lot of popping sounds in comparison to XLRs. Mm. So, mm, a lot of the a lot of the reasons as to why your microphone would cause popping sounds or a click like clipping sounds is because there's not enough power going through your microphone, or there's something wrong with the cable. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah. There's not a lot of power, um, to support the USB microphone. Though it is, um, it is a good alternative if you're short on money or if you're traveling. Mm-mm. And let's see. Do, 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 do. Better ways to reduce echo. That's not really related to uh, the tech, the tech aspect of it. However, you can reduce that by treating your room. And what I mean by that is maybe you can get some uh, acoustic foam, uh, have a thick blanket. Or put a carpet if you have a wooden floor or something something with more surface area on the wall or on the floor so that your voice can be bounced off. Yeah, your voice can be bounced off the walls and be diffused so that it sounds more quiet. Mm-hmm. Egg cartons is a good option. Yeah, I, I have considered that before. Um, one thing that I have wanted to try is get a big cardboard box, flatten it, and then put egg cartons all over it. I think that's gonna be pretty good, though I've never tested out that theory. Yeah. It's a budget phone. Mm -hmm. 
I've heard of boots being sold for soundproofing. Are they legit? Yes, they are legit. I would want that. <laughs> I I have looked into them before. They are they are pretty legit. They have um double walls. And that's going to be really good for uh, an environment where you don't want to be heard. Like you're recording at an apartment or you're, you're in a place where it's super loud and you want to find some way to record in a quieter environment, you can do that. Yeah, but it's so expensive, man. You have a booth, it's called a closet. A closet is also pretty good. Mm -mm -mm. Mm, have you had the chance to test more expensive setups at a studio, for example? Is the extra cost worth it? Um, I think over time you uh, tend to have better ears for the audio quality and whether it's going to sound better for you and whatnot. But I think it's worth it. Mm -mm -mm. How do you deal with excessive keyboard noise? Well, that only really matters when you're streaming, I suppose. Or playing games. But otherwise? When you're recording, why would you touch your keyboard? <laughs> Hmm. Put your keyboard on the floor. No, just don't touch it, man. Uh, let's see. Would you prefer a Neumann fund or a Booth fund? A Neumann! No. <laughs> no. I, I already got a microphone. And... Maybe I'll think about upgrading it two to three years down the line. If I get an uh, like a booth, a vocal booth, maybe I'll consider it. But anyway, what are your thoughts on balanced audio cables? Um, I don't know much about it for me to give you uh, an opinion, but I think they're. I think they're okay. I think they're safe to use. Um, actually, the cables that I'm using, I think they might be balanced. Let's see. I'm not actually sure. I'll get back to you on that. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure it was okay. Ooh! Ooh, I got that delivered. Oh, sweet. Okay, I'm gonna check that out later. Okay, anyway. Oh, nice. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just checking my Amazon. Yeah. But, um, for XLR microphones, you use, um, you know, XLR female to XLR male. Three pins, obviously. Mm -hmm -hmm. But that's not really the question. I think balanced is okay, though, you know, again, I don't really know much about cables to give you an answer on that one. Anyway. Alright, let's see. Do -do 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 -do. <laughs> Any ways to deal with PC fan and AC sounds while streaming? Does sound treating the room help? When- okay, when you're streaming. When you're streaming, that's a little different. Slightly. You can kinda lessen that by uh, using audio filters. Mm-mm-mm. I did just clap. Yeah, I think I did. Mm. Any recommendations for cheap mic for streaming? Well, the cheapest one that I would recommend is Snowball. 
USB microphone. Mm -hmm. And which headphones would you recommend for just listening to streams? Well, if you're just listening to streams, maybe an open back? Or gaming headphones? I, I think they're pretty okay. Uh, most of the time I just use gaming headphones. Uh, you know, when, when I'm not recording. But if it's for general use, I just use gaming headphones. Yeah. Right. Do, 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 do. Are condensers or dynamic better? Um, I think there's no such thing as what's better. It's more what's better suitable for the current situation that you're in. Yeah. Like, whether you're in a louder environment or whatever. Yeah, it's very situational. Does a wireless versus wired make that much of a difference? <sighs> well, I'm kind of the part of the wired gang. That's probably because I'm biased. <laughs> I think it's safer that way. And I think it can help with the delay, and I think it assures the quality, too. Obviously, it's gonna be more convenient because it's wireless, it's gonna look cleaner, too. But if something goes wrong, you can't really fix it. But then again, you can't really fix wired stuff, either. But I just think that wired ones are safer. I think they're better. <laughs> But I'm just biased. Yeah, even even for uh, my computer mouse, I use wired. Mm. Let's see. Is it possible to get lossless wireless audio quality? Maybe? Not from an XLR microphone, I really doubt it. Oh, do you use any earphones for recording? Or always headphones. Uh, I have thought about using earphones. Though, most of the time, I just use that for monitoring. Uh, the mix after I'm done. But aside from that, I don't really use it. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see. Are there any headsets you'd recommend? Well, headsets, I would recommend the Bayer Dynamics. I think those are pretty good. And the Sennheiser. They're- they're pretty solid. And uh, let's see here. Do you say wave or wavi? Wave. <laughs> oh yeah, the HD6XX. Uh, that's pretty good. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Can you write down your recommendations on the board, please? Really? Which which one are we talking? For headphones or for microphones? I don't know what we're talking about. All of them, huh? Uh, I don't know. I don't know, man. It's just personal preference. That doesn't mean that I'm right. 
at the end of the day, like I said, you need to find the right setup that's right for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just, I don't know if I'm allowed to write specific brands on the board. That's the most honest question that... Not question, uh, the most honest answer that I can give you. Just like... Just look at the VOD later. <laughs> mm hmm Will you answer more questions once the stream ends, or is this a limited time? Um... Mm, if I haven't covered it for this stream, maybe I will. But... Yeah. If it gets brought up later, I might answer. Mm -hmm. Oh, what's the best format to save audio? MP3, WAV, WebM, uh, WAV. Though, WAV kind of takes up a lot. Um, the, the file size is a little too big. Well, there's, there's FLAC too, but... Most of the time, when you're handing over recordings, uh, it's WAVE, so just use WAVE. Yeah, but... You can also render uh, the MP3 file format uh, with high quality. And... You know, you can't really tell that big of a difference. But if it's an audio file, I guess that's a different case, but... Uh, most of the time, people won't be able to hear the difference, and if you're really wanting to save file size, then go for MP3. If you can... I guess, if you can afford it, if you can afford the file size, go for WAVE. Yeah, exactly. Most people will not be able to tell 320 kilobytes, um... Not uh, kilobytes, whatever, the, the 321 mp3 with WAVE. If you render uh, mp3 high quality, most people will not be able to tell the difference. Ah, <sighs> yeah. How much disk space uh, have you spent on recordings? I kind of delete mine over time when I'm done. Though I have tried to not make that into a habit. Mm -hmm. Any suggested recording software? Audacity. Audacity is free. And I think open source? Yeah, it's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Audacity is open source. Okay, great. Yeah. I used Audacity and it was pretty good. It was pretty reliable. And then, you know, I started using um other other DAWs, um other softwares. I think I've tried three of them. Yeah. I just decided to stick with two of them at the end. Paid softwares, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the best is... The best... <laughs> best is subjective, like I said. Mm, hard does hardware usually come with their own recording stuff? That also depends. Mm. Sometimes they offer it to you, sometimes they don't. Yeah, it's really up to preference. Hmm. Yeah. It's uh it's pretty nice to be able to talk about this. Sometimes, um, like, I'm looking for ways to reduce audio interference or reduce just, just background noise. 
Yeah, by soundproofing my room further. And... Oh! I use, uh, blackout curtains. Yeah, for the windows. I... Yeah, I use blackout curtains. Just any sort of thick curtain to block out the sounds uh, from outside. And like I said, um, it's going to absorb your sound bouncing, bouncing around the walls and whatever. Because it's fabric, and fabric can absorb um, the sounds better. Mm. And then acoustic panels. I got like this one giant acoustic panel that I got off uh, from Craigslist and it was super cheap. And the material was made out of rock wool and I was so excited. And you know, it's such a big size. And I was like, whoa, you're selling this for $75? That's insane. Or was it cheaper? I think it might've been cheaper. And then I was like, whoa, you know, with, you, you know, it's, it's usually around 200 to $300, but you're selling it for just like under, under $100. How is this possible? Yeah. And they just said, um, like the, the, the person who decided to buy it decided not to so that's why they were selling it i was like that's awesome i'll i'll take it oh my goodness rock wool rock wool is the best soundproofing material and you're gonna give it away for free oh my god my mind is blown yeah Mm, see. Uh, can you mix and master songs with the DAWs? Of course. Yes, you can do that 100%. Mm -hmm. You have any recommendations for travel mics? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, USB microphones, like I said, pretty safe. In your experience, how much improvement can software make on a basic budget setup? Pretty, pretty big. It's going to make pretty big of a difference because you can, you can EQ them, you can reduce the unwanted frequencies by again EQing, or you can compress it. It's the world's your oyster, really. Oh, what's the difference between an audio interface and an amp? Oh, well, I can't tell you about an amp, but I, I can tell you about a preamp. So, uh, mm, the, the audio interface, like I said, it's where you control the, the gain, the volume of your microphone, and also... Uh, it's for powering your microphone and all that. But a preamp, uh, that's going to be uh, giving more power to your microphone. And because of that, uh, you might be able to help the microphone peak less. Yeah, that's pretty much all I can say. Honestly, I wasn't planning on getting a preamp, but then my friend was going, Hey, you should get a preamp, you should get a preamp, you should get a preamp! And I said, okay, fine. And yeah, it's been, it's been doing me good. Although I realized that I was using the microphone wrong this entire time because I was uh, setting that to line, which reduces the gain by negative 30. And I've been using it like that this entire time. So obviously, when I try to increase the gain while it's super quiet, it's gonna create more background noise. So when I realized that, that I've been using it wrong for the past few months, I was really, really angry. Ah, <laughs> oh, man. 
because I kept thinking, why? Why does the quality not sound that good? And then I just like flipped one switch and it was different. And I was so baffled. And I was, I was like, I, I, I set the entire thing according to what my friend said. And, well, that friend, I guess, forgot to tell me that. But, you know, that's also on me for not deciding to look into it myself closely. Yeah, I was a fooler. But now, now it's good. Should I invest a lot in a setup to start with voice recordings or keep it budget tight? Um... So... This is where it gets a little... Tricky, I suppose. Sometimes people think, okay... I wanna- I wanna do this. I wanna- I wanna get started on this. So I'm gonna splurge. But I personally don't think that's a good idea because you should only invest in getting a more expensive setup if you think you want to pursue this further. Like you want to record for more things. You want to actually produce more things. But if you spend so much money and decide that you're not interested in it anymore, then it's kind of a waste of money, you know? Yeah. So my mindset is more... more about investing and not spending it. Mm-mm-mm. Like, I... I got my USB microphone from Craigslist because um, I think the Yeti costs around like 130 or 140 but then on Craigslist it was just $100 and I was like, heck, I'll take that and then I got it. Uh, in Canadian, yeah. Yeah. And I got it completely new, which was nice. Mm hmm. Like I said, I did use Yeti. Mm hmm. I have a soft spot for Yeti microphones. Mm hmm. Though, the Yeti does capture a lot of background noise, so... I don't know, maybe there are other USB microphones that are better. I have heard a lot of good things about the AT2020. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, how long have you been an audiophile? What does it take to become as experienced as you? Oh, I'm not that experienced. Um... Though, I guess I have been, uh, very interested in looking into these types of things. It's more, it's more thinking, oh, um, USB microphones can only get me so far. Uh, I should probably think about upgrading it, and then I upgrade it. And I think, oh, well, I invested in this setup, but I feel like I'm not utilizing it. Uh, to its maximum potential. What can I do to improve this? And then just look into it and find little tidbits here and there and yeah. And then she falls into the audio rabbit hole. Ha 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 ha. I guess, yeah. How often do you upgrade your gear? Eh, that really depends. Maybe uh, once a year.
<laughs> That's probably not true. Uh, <laughs> um, well, lately, I didn't upgrade. I did replace the cables to something better. But if you exclude the soundproofing materials, then I would say once a year. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, but if it's including soundproofing, then maybe once every four to five months. How do you know when to upgrade? Is there a specific thing or just a feeling? So... You're really happy with your microphone. You think it's doing its job. However, you begin to notice that there are limitations to this microphone. For example... Um... The, the frequencies that you wanted to focus on are kind of off. It's something like that, or it peaks too much in comparison to other microphones. And those things kind of build up, and then you notice another microphone that seems better. And you think, wow, that's, that's kind of tempting. <laughs> <H> Hello. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but that's about it. How do you judge something as good audio? Like, how is it better in quality, more frequency, any metrics? Um... Hmm... It's kind of focusing on... Um... The demo. The demo of the microphones. You listen to it and see how it works for different people and you listen to the reviews and see how it sounds like for people with um, a higher pitch voice or a lower pitch or mid-range and you take a listen with your headphones or you know something that's pretty good audio quality and you kind of do a ballpark yeah and also you look at a bunch of reviews and see whether the noise floor levels are gonna be okay but isn't it better to come directly to the store and test it yourself the thing is it's kind of hard to test it out that's the that's the best one obviously going to a store and test it out but I, let's just say that I haven't had much opportunity to uh, go into a store and test out microphones because they either don't have the microphone that I want or they just don't offer that kind of opportunity. I'm assuming music stores, um, you're able to come in and test it out. But I personally have not had a good luck. Yeah, sometimes you want that in-person experience. Of course, that's the that's the best way to go about it, but I never could go in and test it out myself. So the best thing to do is just look at reviews. See, okay, maybe that's all the questions. Mm -hmm. If that's all the that's all the questions that you have, I think it would be good to wrap it up. Oh, 
Oh, wait, what got you into audio? Oh, well, I guess that's a cool last question to wrap things up. Um, well, hmm. Yeah, the reason why I got into audio was because, um, initially I was using uh, phone microphones. And I realized that there was a limit. Like, there were, there were limitations for using a phone microphone. Because it would pop a lot more, uh, there'd be a lot of unwanted noise. So I decided to upgrade to a USB microphone. And I saw how big of an upgrade that was. And I was thinking, wow, that's amazing. And I was just using it. Uh, of course, there are some pops here and there, but yeah, that that did kind of get on my nerves. Uh, the popping sounds, the plosives. Um, so I was looking into how I could reduce that, and I realized that by having a pop filter, that's going to reduce it. So I got that, and it did lessen it, which got me happy. But then the popping sounds that would come from the microphone itself, I couldn't fix it. But the take was really good. So I would think to myself, how would I be able to save this file? So I would look into uh, mm, fixing, fixing the audio to fix that exact spot. And now it wouldn't clean it 100%, but I didn't get a better idea as to how to clean it up. And then, uh, after being able to clean that up, I kind of got mm, tired of doing that. And I realized that I wanted to do something more with audio-related stuff, so I decided to upgrade my, um, my setup to XLR. Now I did a lot of research into uh, finding which one would be the right one for me. And I was pretty happy with the microphone for about three years, I think three years. And then I also, like I did with the USB microphone, started noticing the limitations that it had. And then I got this microphone that I have right now. And yeah, I guess it's okay. Mm, it's a... It's a relatively neutral sounding microphone, and I'll take it. Yeah. What's your microphone? That's a secret. <laughs> yeah. Mm hmm. I can tell you that it's a condenser microphone. I prefer condenser microphones, personally, so... Yeah... Is this why your karaoke... Oh, is this and your karaoke mic different? No, just different audio interface, but... Like I said, the noise floor for the Go XLR is a little higher. So that's why I prefer using my usual go-to audio interface. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah! Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But anyway, can probably end the Q&A. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, but I've been showing you guys some of the more popular microphones that are being used uh, currently, but if you find a microphone that works for you, then go for that. You don't need to follow any rules, just go for whatever you think would work for you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And yeah, with that, I will have to bid you adieu. Mm hmm. 
and good luck on your journey with audio stuff. And hope it was informative. Yeah. And maybe next time, if you guys have more questions related to audio stuff that I think I can answer, I will. As long as it's something that I didn't answer for the stream. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Yeah! Hopefully it was straightforward. I tried to explain it in a more straightforward way. Yeah! Alright. Thank you everyone for paying attention to this class and... Yeah! Kuroyasumi! Me.